Hi, this is Attila16, and this is a video of Wargame Airland Battle. In this case, I'm presenting a request of a NATO deck, which will be mixed. And uh, I will present it with a replay. So I'm, I will just quickly go through the different units, because most of them are already covered in previous uh, guides. So I use a Grizzly, I have four of them, so I can capture the zone quickly. I use an HEMTT uh, for supplies. I use uh, a chopper, Canadian chopper here, an FOB. Then I use a SO engineer for uh, fighting in the wood. I use a TGM Milan F2, which can nearly single shot a T80 uh, on the side. Then I use some um, uh, Vendus uh, with uh, the chopper, uh, well, uh, Milan is also with the chopper. These two will serve me to capture uh, buildings. Then I use Flak Panzer Gepard and uh, Chaparral. Uh, Chaparral are my anti-chopper. Flak Panzer are mobile uh, AA that can shoot on the move, which is practical. Then I use the Martyr Roland 2 uh, with uh, well, two group, maximum experience for all this. And uh, these are my anti-plane, essentially, and chopper as well. They're really good for that. Then I use, in terms of tank, I use Harpoon, uh, AMX-13 Harpoon, and two group, maximum experience, because they are ATGM units. Well, they have missile. Uh, then I use the Cougar. Uh, no experience there, because I want them for the number. Then I use a scimitar, which have a Bushmaster uh, to cannon, which is very nice, but uh, they are recon, so that's also very nice. I use a Kiowa with Hellfire, which is uh, very nice as well. I use, uh, use an AMX 1390, uh, which I wanted to try, uh, with maximum amount of experience. Then I use uh, two group of two with maximum amount of experience. I use two Cobra with maximum amount of experience. I use uh, CF-188 Ornit for well, Canadian cluster bomb bomber, essentially, uh, as well as a very good fighter. Then I use uh, the F-16A Fighting Falcon for the Norwegian with uh, two bombs of a thousand uh, kilo. And then I use Tornado because they have a Maverick missile and they are pretty fast. So this is my United Nation deck, and this is also a deck which is motorized, which is kind of weird with the way I'm organizing my army, because uh, I only have one unit which is on wheel, the rest is all in chopper here. But uh, what it does is that my recon will be better, and my plane costs less. So that's uh, an interesting aspect. Now let's, uh, let's go for a replay. I'll show you what happened with this deck, and uh, let's do that. Okay, so this is a replay of a game I did uh, which went uh, very well. And uh, with this deck, essentially, it's the game that I did right after creating the deck uh, for uh, you guys, because it was a request. So, uh, this is a 10 versus 10, of course. I like 10 versus 10 because uh, I guess it's share the blame on uh, why we lost. <laughs> and uh, essentially, uh, here I started the World War II on the left side, but I ended up being alone. And this is something which is mostly true for the most part because I remain alone during nearly all the battle. And I only receive uh, some. Uh, plane support from time to time. At the same time, in this battle, I end up not calling any air units, uh, which is kind of strange because uh, I, the whole point of having a motorized uh, uh, deck in this case will be that uh, you can have more plane for less. Also, I I don't really uh, use most of my uh, strong units. I mostly rely on very inexpensive unit. And uh, here my key of uh, this deck uh, becomes the Milan F2, which are uh, my ATGM unit, which I'll deploy in there. And uh, you, you will see during this replay that supply became extremely important. And uh, I had to bring uh, quite a flow of supplies uh, non-stop. Uh, I think that's one of the rare games where supply were that important. And also, uh, 
the enemy. Uh, well, I, I don't think they were super experienced because uh, I think uh, normally I should have been uh, defeated quite simply. But uh, in this case, I ended up uh, doing pretty well. So you can see here that my uh, grizzly is heading toward the zone very fast. I have also my chopper over there. And the goal here is always to go as fast as possible at the beginning because uh, you want to fly, well, not to fly, but to roll below the uh, potential uh, enemy airstrike on the zone uh, because uh, it's fairly common for people to do an airstrike. So now my uh, command vehicle uh, went further than I expected, so he ended up here, which is uh, totally not safe because if the enemy does a, a strike here, that will could have been disastrous. So I captured the zone at the same time as uh, they do. I had the time to uh, call in a few uh, engineer here, as an engineer, uh, for fighting into the wood. Well, here I decided to send uh, my uh, anti-air to the right side, this way if the enemy send planes I will be able to intercept them. Now also here my ATGM million have a pretty good range, let's uh, verify that. Okay, so no key range, it's uh, 2.4 kilometer. So uh, they essentially engage the enemy over there. I was actually facing four players and they were not uh, uh, 10 player on the other side so uh, the result of this is that I was fighting 4 players which had more resource than I did because my team was full on like uh, theirs so here my uh, engineer were uh, intercepted by uh, those uh, chopper there uh, but fortunately chaparral have such a long range that uh, they were uh, shooting down those uh, MI-24 very effectively and they killed uh, at least four of them fairly early on. At the same time here the enemy uh, decided to put so many anti-air in there that my ally uh, did uh, a good move by bombarding the whole place. While well, here my melee were uh, shooting the enemy on the right side and in here my engineer and their zombies were uh, intercepting enemy infantry here Let's see a small fight where I kill their uh, infantry I'm kind of surprised that they did not push harder here because I only had uh, those SO engineer which are not particularly good against tank normally uh, you will most likely not be able to kill tank like that. Uh, but I think what happened here is an airstrike that's why I've explained everything Sometimes in this game, uh, replay are much more interesting than playing. Should add the spectating mode. So you can see that there was some uh, air to air action there. So the initial contact was largely in my favor already at the beginning. I did kill uh, with my ATGM and then uh, a few enemy tanks. Same time here was a few. Uh, it was probably a T64, which were then quickly engaged by my Milan. That's a pretty good range, and you can see that my Milan, uh, the uh, if they hit one time on those tanks, they destroyed them. So as a result of this. Um, my million were really deadly to him. Well, here they actually managed to survive a hit. Let's verify how much million it is. 24 damage. That's, uh, that's a lot. Well, here my uh, martyr rolling two, which are here, are shooting down more choppers. So I did have... Uh, anti-air means here with those martyr roll into while my chaparral are more like uh, a few good shot they only have four rounds each so that's eight uh, round for two units 
Well, my murder rolling since it has 10 missile for one unit, uh, it can. Uh, it's much more reliable to maintain air superiority. Now, MiG 29 actually did a strike on my rolling, and I think the rolling is really resistant to enemy airstrike, which is. Uh, it must have boosted that or something because uh, now it has two top armor, which is uh, very good. It used to be that uh, you will be able to kill those Roland in one uh, cluster bomb strike, but uh, that doesn't seem the case anymore. Now you see those Chevrolet? They shut down every chopper around the place. Now the enemy tried to smoke my uh, area. Which was a smart smart strategy because um, all my uh, anti-tank uh, weapons were all here. You can see here that I brought uh, a supply chopper. And I think this uh, round really was uh, a lot about uh, supplies. I kept uh, bringing supplies back and forth between uh, my troops and the FOB. At the same time, here their smoke screen wasn't thick enough, so it disappeared after a few... Uh, uh, well, a short moment. Well, <laughs> here my chaparral shut down another chopper. I think with the chopper, if you have a chaparral uh, M48A1, uh, you might as well not bring any chopper around. Now, the uh, other team has decided to send in uh, a small uh, group of infantry. Now you can see that uh, the infantry in there is Moto Strelsky most likely and the BMP or BMP2 which cost 30. Now they uh, noticed that uh, my Milan were destroying all their vehicles before they even got close. So they unloaded their uh, infantry which I saw and reacted to by sending my uh, uh, Puma. The thing is that uh, if the enemy did manage to get into the building with my uh, Milan, they would have defeated them fairly easily. So that's why my Puma became a very good solution for all this. At the same time, uh, my team decided to bring in what well, fire some artillery. While my ATGM I kept destroying uh, the enemy tank here. These were T-72, so... I can see it, those uh, enemy uh, running literally under an insane fire of Puma. Okay, there we go. So essentially, you see how the chopper uh, can be a good complement to those ATGM units because uh, ATGM are vulnerable to enemy infantry as well as other things but uh, the chopper itself uh, can be very good at dealing against infantry in either uh, wood or open field like uh, this case here well here you can see that I keep moving those uh, chaparral all the time they are very mobile which is surprising but uh, these are uh, truly the key of uh, the battle on this side because uh, with those chaparral I can fire on the enemy chopper from so far that uh, it's, uh, it's ridiculous if you ask me. Let's see how far this thing goes. 3.5 kilometers. So essentially that's uh, way further than any chopper can fire at you. So if you have a chaparral A1 in the area and you're the pact, just don't bother with it. Well, here you have some Tungushka. I sent my chopper here in a kind of a wasteful uh, move, but that was mostly to recon the area. I wanted to see what kind of uh, opposition there was because I might have wanted to call in an airstrike but uh, I decided not to because of the amount of uh, air unit well anti-air units and at the same time my ally decided to bring in some uh, raven which uh, 
are much better suited than my own troops to clear out the enemy AA. And uh, actually it's much better when uh, your ally loses uh, your troop uh, instead of you. Although my ally wasted a strike eagle here which uh, was uh, pretty bad. Now you have here uh, an A10 which was uh, pretty damaged. Well here my ally decided to bring some uh, leopard, Canadian leopard. Which uh, was a good move because there wasn't much uh, enemy tank there. Well, here uh, the enemy either pulled it back or uh, the, the unit panicked and uh, I destroyed their Tungushka with my Milan. I guess that really does show you the worth of uh, Milan F2. I can see uh, that the enemy has a few ATGM unit on that side. And here we actually saw briefly uh, an enemy command vehicle. Now notice that uh, I have chopper here, chopper here. You have uh, a supply truck here. And my supply depot is starting to be empty. I have one which is coming back here. The thing is that those supply trucks have so much supply that uh, it goes away really fast. So you can see that uh, if you manage to feed the uh, supply for uh, those ATGM Milan, it can be uh, certainly one of the best uh, uh, weapon out there. Well, here actually, uh, you can see that I have my command vehicle uh, Grizzly here, and that I actually do have another one here. Now, the thing is that the reason why I brought the second one is that uh, this one was really dangerously placed. I uh, did not really trust uh, the location of it, so I brought another one to be able to move this one. But I think I ended up not moving it, but uh, still. Now here I had uh, some Cobra. Which version of the Cobra is that? 1F. At the same time, with the amount of enemy at Ngushka, it was uh, a pretty bad idea to try to move your my Cobra around. So here it was a kind of a standstill. There was no way I was uh, going to move and there was no way the enemy was going to move either. Well here on the side I decided to bring some uh, scimitar uh, with their Bushmaster auto cannon. And the reason why I brought those uh, specific units is that I wanted to prevent a potential offensive of light vehicle and infantry uh, from that uh, line of tree. At the same time, oh yeah, somebody uh, complained that I did not have sufficient amount of anti-air, which uh, was uh, most likely true. So I brought my uh, Martyr Roland 2, which is a uh, very nice uh, anti-air, mostly good against uh, Chopper, but uh, very effective against plane as, as well. Essentially, with maximum amount of experience, uh, it will never miss. Nearly. So, uh, was bringing those uh, reinforcements, and while doing that, I brought in some cougar, Canadian cougar, as well as uh, some harpoon, which I did not bring in on the plateau there uh, because uh, I did not want to reveal their existence. Actually, they are not there yet; they will come. So you can see them. And the, the thing is that what's fun about the Cougar is that it's a light vehicle. It uses uh, E rounds. And also, uh, you can have lots of them. They are really fast off road, as you can see. It goes very fast. And even more uh, fast on road, as you can see here. Whoa, nearly flipped there. But. Uh, it's a fun little tank, I will say. Well, here you can see that my uh, Roland are now deployed. 
I deploy them into a line individually. Not sure. I'm not sure if it's better to have them individual or uh, in group, but I decided to do individual because that will share the risk on multiple location. And uh, yeah, well, as you can see, uh, the enemy was bombarding my uh, Milan there with more or less effectiveness. Well, on the rest of the front, uh, since my team was more numerous, I suppose they had a, an easy time uh, advancing. But on my side, I had uh, four players. That was uh, a little challenging. <laughs> I can see my chaperone uh, shooting down uh, planes and chopper. And there you go. That's why uh, you should never put your command vehicle near buildings like this, because uh, that uh, make them uh, vulnerable to cluster f uh, cluster sh uh, bomb strike. I can see the enemy is actually attacking with uh, MiG-21 uh, with rockets. Which I believe in this game is a kind of a waste because those uh, specific MiG, uh, they don't fire all their missile while well, rockets, and as a result of this, uh, they are most likely to uh, die, as uh, shown here. The thing is that I I think they really should uh, remove uh, a certain amount of uh, rockets because uh, you want your plane to just get out of there after a rocket strike. Because it's most likely that there is on tire around the place. Now the enemy is flanking in there. They've managed to kill my uh, SO engineer. But uh, I have a good army here to wait for them. Well here they are still sending those uh, MiG-21. Which are dying very badly. Now they're bringing more uh, MI-24. But I think my chaperone actually have an angle on them. Let's see about that. Yeah, chaperone has an angle. It's shooting down recons as well as uh, enemy choppers. But uh, sadly, I exposed them to enemy fire and I lost one chaperone. Well, here there is some action going on. They decided to bring some T-64B, which I decided to answer with uh, a horde of Cougar. So you can see my Cougar uh, gloriously heading into the fight. And those T-64 be uh, dying. Now the, th the thing is that the Cougar doesn't have much firepower, but uh, in large quantity it can uh, can act pretty well. So the enemy chopper decided to react to my Cougar, and as a result of this, my uh, rear martyr Roland um, shoot them down and. Uh, I brought them up the plateau because uh, I knew that those uh, chopper would become a risk for my uh, cougar. At the same time here with my cougar I was a little careless. So I was a little uh, overconfident there. And the cougar against uh, infantry is a bad uh, idea. You should not do that. So I decided uh, at some point to pull them out. Yeah, there we go. So I just moved in and then I'm moving out. Well here I brought in my harpoon. Which I were too far to achieve anything. But uh, I decided to... Oh yeah, here I actually moved some stuff. I didn't move in a martyr Roland 2. As well as some Vandus. I have no idea why. So, uh, I have no idea what happened there. I don't remember giving that order. Well, here I have some Vandus which are making their way into the forest there. 
against uh, Motostrelsky. Now let's see how it goes. It's a tiny firefight. Now, since my martyr Roland did their work, I decided to pull them back again. At the same time, the enemy did have a lot of uh, chopper there. Which were a bit of an issue. Oh yeah, that's right. I decided to move my Cobras here to destroy those T-64B. The enemy as a response to this send their MI-24 and uh, with that unit of murder rolling too, I uh, killed everything. So those chopper really uh, were slaughtered by my murder rolling too. And the enemy had more of them. Well here I decided to move in my uh, harpoon. In a very glorious but vain move, which I probably could have lived without. There was no point for me to push uh, forward. Also, my martyr rolling here only had one uh, missile remaining, so that was uh, pretty bad. But I did have uh, my uh, chaparral here, which were reloaded. I actually uh, did manage to shoot on stuff up there. It was quite uh, an air war that... Uh, happen ab above me but uh, did not do much so here you can see uh, with my uh, harpoon the great accuracy essentially they are shooting the sun or something of that kind I think they have um, a shooting radius of probably uh, a kilometer fortunately uh, the artillery was uh, a little more effective at stunning the enemy here. It wasn't my artillery though. My ally here decided to move on the side with uh, his Canadian uh, Leopard. So he probably took a good, uh, a few good shots on the enemy here. While my harpoon here were uh, literally slaughter. But the thing with the, uh, the harpoon is that it's so inexpensive that uh, you can afford that kind of mistake and that won't cost you the victory. And you can see here that they're moving forward uh, to engage the enemy with their cannon, but the range of the cannon is uh, just so low that it's not worth it. Well, here I'm moving my chaparral forward, hoping that uh, it will destroy those uh, Mi-24, and it does. That's 84 points uh, each, so that's a good deal for me. Well, here, since I'm out of ammo, I'm pulling them back. I guess you can see the value of uh, micromanaging well your uh, uh, AA. Now, the thing is that the enemy knew that the little chaperone were out of ammo, so they moved in. And my martyr and uh, flak panzer gaper just destroyed him. So, uh, in this round, I actually killed uh, 5,570 enemy and lost 1,880. Uh, so, that was a really good round for me. If we look at uh, where the kill goes, essentially my ATGM Milan F2 did most of the work. Uh, it, they killed very valuable units because T64B are uh, usually good. Those chaparral did kill, as you can see, a large amount of choppers. That was a very valuable. Uh, Milan F2 here. More enemies. Uh, so Engineer did not do much. Martyr Roland 2 did kill a few Mi-24. Milan F2 here. I only had uh, a few units of Milan F2 and you can see the amount of kill they did. So. Uh, uh, Cobra, yeah, a few kills here as well, not much. Martyr Roland 2 here killed uh, nearly all the planes that I killed. A few more planes here. TGM Milan, Simtar, Simtar, Cougar, 
Well, my cougar did not do much. <laughs> my cougar killed one. That's uh, pretty good. Vendus did kill a few, but not much. And I mostly lost stuff to enemy uh, chopper, anti air. Oh, yeah, that's because of my puma. That was quite a waste. I lost a couple of cougar. Lost a few martyr to enemy uh, seed plane. Yeah, make 25 BM. I lost a loss. I lost a lot of harpoons in vain to enemy uh, T64B. And this is it. Essentially, that was a very good rain, uh, round, all things considered. 5,000, that's a pretty good score, and I was able to hold uh, my flank against four players. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, more casual uh, round of the game, and I'll see you on the next one. If you have any specific requests, uh, go ahead and ask.